Hello, everyone. My name is Martha Perez, and I am the marketing director for LMP Solutions at Unchained Labs, and I'll be your moderator today. Thank you for joining us. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. To ask questions, all you have to do is click on the Q&A button in the Zoom navigation bar, either at the top or the bottom of your screen, and type your question in there. When submitting a question, please avoid clicking the anonymous button so we can reach out via email if we aren't able to get to your question during the live presentation. We will get to as many of them as we can. I'd like to introduce Kevin Lance, Marketing Director for Viral Vector Solutions at Unchained Labs. Today, Kevin will walk us through how Stunner's technologies provide a robust method useful for rapid sample QC and optimizing downstream purification chromatography. He'll show published data and case studies on how well Stunner can accelerate AAV characterization. And now I'll hand it over to Kevin. Hi, Martha. I'm excited to talk about AAV. Are you? Are you ready? You ready to do this? <laughs> I am very excited to learn more about AAV. Thanks, Kevin. Okay. Great. So. When it comes to AAV, bringing every, you know, bringing every drop of data from a tiny sample volume of your AAV can be the difference between understanding what's really going on in your sample and leaving questions unanswered. For uh, AAV characterization, that could be things like capsid titer, genome titer, empty flow ratio, aggregation, or even total amounts of protein or DNA present. So today's talk is going to be all about how you can uncover every uh, piece of information possible from tiny, tiny sample volumes of your AAV sample. Not all surprises are fun. So when you're looking at an AAV sample, uh, things that unexpectedly show up, you know, maybe floating in your lunch or floating in your sample tube, for sure aren't a good surprise. Uh, for AAV research, you know, just like lunch, we don't want anything showing up there. Uh, a good way to avoid any surprises is to do a quick check of what you have, again, true both for lunch and for AAV sample. Uh, but current analytical techniques for AAV are often slow or use large sample volumes and or could be complex and annoying to perform. So today we're gonna to talk about a, a solution that allows you to quickly take a look at your AAV sample, characterize what's going on there and avoid any surprises or at least any of the bad ones. Uh, so when you have an AAV sample, you have a lot of questions. So you could be wondering what's your capsid titer, what's your genome titer, has aggregation struck on your sample, or even more complex things. Uh, what's even more of an issue is that the AAV itself is a truly complex biologic. It's uh, not only a protein and a DNA combined, but we also have structure to worry about. Uh, where the DNA needs to be inside of the capsid. And then beyond that, we have to worry about quaternary structure or you know, looking at things like aggregation going on that we want to avoid. So when you're characterizing uh, a biologic like this or a viral vector like this, you really need to have an advanced solution that's able to handle something as complex as AAV is. So if we start looking at the basic analytical techniques uh, like DLS and UVBiz, each of them tells a part of the story that's powerful. So for example, DLS gets you info on caps and titer and aggregation, but it can't tell you anything about the amount of DNA that's present in your sample. UEVIS, on the other hand, can tell you the total amounts of protein and DNA present in your sample, and you can use those to calculate the empty flow ratio, but it can't tell you anything about particles present in your sample. Uh, do you have particles in there at all, for example? UEVIS won't, won't let you know. So each of these is a powerful technique, but on their own, they're incomplete. But what if you could combine them? And that's exactly where Stunner comes into the equation because Stunner brings together those two technologies to give you a lot of very unique uh, capabilities when it comes to characterizing your AAV. Uh, first and foremost, Stunner is an excellent solution at getting you a rapid capsid and genome titer for your sample. Uh, because it can give you an answer on only two microliters of sample in less than a minute per sample, all done without any labels, reagents, or standards to get to that capsid titer answer. At the same time, Stunner's also gonna give you results on, is your sample aggregated? Because it has that DLS information. 
and it'll tell you what the empty full ratio is based on the balance of protein and DNA present in your, uh, in your AEV. So let's take a look at how those capabilities, looking at tighter aggregation empty full ratio on super small sample volumes uh, in a very easy and fast assay uh, can be used. But well, first, let's take a look at uh, how this is done. So Stunner operates using a Stunner plate, which is follows a normal uh, 8 by 12, you know, 96 well uh, plate SBS format. But instead of having, you know, an open cylinder, each one of those wells is a microfluidic circuit. That's where we can take advantage of the two microliters, microliters of sample that Stunner needs, because all we do is pipette in our two microliter sample volume into the input well. And at the bottom of the input well is a tiny hole that allows the sample to be whipped into the serpentine microfluidic reservoir, where it'll hang out until it's analyzed by Stunner inside one of the uh, inside these chambers that have uh, two fixed path lengths, 0.1 millimeter and 0.7 millimeter path lengths. So that's where you, how you get so much data off of only two microliters is because every sample is analyzed in a microfluidic circuit. Uh, what this looks like if we're pipetting in a sample, and this is shown in real time, is simply added into the well and things are whipped in uh, on their own. So now the sample is ready to hang out for up to two hours where you don't have to worry about evaporation. Uh, you don't have to worry about cleaning uh, analytical techniques between samples. Uh, you're just ready to go read your plate on Stunner uh, when you need to. Once inside of Stunner, the sample is pumped into those uh, path lengths, those uh, microcuvettes with fixed path lengths, and that's where your UV vis and DLS reads are done. Now, because those path lengths of those microcuvettes are fixed, that's what allows Stunner to get incredibly accurate and precise readings on your UV vis information. And we can, we can use that to calculate how much protein and DNA is present and understand what the empty flow ratio is for your AAV sample. At the same time, in one of those chambers, DLS is done. That's where we're going to get our size and aggregation information, as well as the core underlying uh, piece of information to get us to caps it tighter. So that Raw data from an AAV sample looks just like this. We'll have a UV vis read of absorbance, where that's typically going to peak uh, somewhere between 280 and 260, since there's usually a blend of uh, DNA and protein present for an AAV sample. Uh, and then we'll also have a DLS read as well. Okay, so when we're looking at uh, the information a little bit closer, Stunner's like no other in the way that it's going to analyze this information. So by UV vis, we start with the total absorbance read, which is going to be the total spectrum in dark gray. Uh, and then Stunner, Stunner has advanced unmith, unmixed algorithms that can break down that total spectra into the underlying DNA and protein components. So instead of analyzing absorbance at A260 and A280 and kind of hoping for the best, Stunner knows what's in your sample, it's AAV, and can break it down into exactly what the absorbance signal is for your DNA and the absorbance signal is for your protein. On the light scattering side of, uh, of, the, of the world for Stunner, uh, we have DLS that's giving us a size distribution. So we understand that uh, our capsids are our predominant peak here in our sample by DLS. And then there's in this sample, just as an example, we're showing that there's some aggregates present as well. So that's our first understanding of size and size distribution. Uh, Stunner is also going to take a look at the sample and understand how much uh, light scattering intensity is coming from the green area of the curve, area under the curve, that's attributable just to capsids. Okay, so how Stunner combines these pieces of information to get you to an even better capsid tighter uh, and, uh, data point and empty flow ratio. So first, uh, we start with the UV vis uh, read. Here we have our total spectrum, and then that's broken down into total DNA and total protein, like I said on the slide before. Uh, then Stunner can analyze that information to understand what's the percent full for your sample. This is done because you can input the capsid amino acid design and the uh, genome length that you expect in your AAV, and Stunner does all the calculations for you to go from absorbance all the way to uh, you know, tighter by UV vis and percent full. So in other words, the ratio of protein and DNA present. By DLS, we're understanding where our capsids are and how intense that signal is. And if we're looking at just the area under the curve for our capsids, that's going to be static light scattering signal, SLS. 
This is just an intensity that's going to correspond to kind of two things going on at the same time. One is how many capsids that we have, and the other one is going to be how full they are because that impacts molecular weight. So if we have a single SLS data point, uh, we actually have a range of answers that could correspond to that. That could be a capsid titer that's a little bit lower, but corresponds to fuller AAV uh, capsids, or it could be a capsid titer that's a little bit higher, but the molecular weight is lower because they're all empty. So now we have uh, this sort of puzzle of, hey, what's the most accurate capsid titer going to be? Well, the way that Stunner solves that is by combining that percent full information from UVBiz to understand the best capsid titer answer for your sample. What this looks like when you start uh, an analyzing the, the process result is uh, a total picture of the you know, protein and DNA and capsids going on in your sample. So first I'll start in the world, you know, this blue column over here, which is the world of protein. Uh, from our DLS, SLS, and UVBiz read, we get an understanding of the total amount of capsids that are present uh, by understanding, you know, what is our capsid titer from SLS and UVBiz. Now, if there's a little bit more absorbance from the proteins present in your sample, we know that that excess can be attributed to protein aggregates or free, you know, uh, soluble proteins present in your sample. Um, the DNA world, the sort of green column over here, works the same way, where we're understanding a capsid titer information by combining our three underlying technologies, and then any excess uh, absorbance from that we see on the UVBiz that's not attributable to capsids is extra DNA that's present in our sample. So when we have all those answers together, we can get a total capsid titer in capsid per mil. Uh, how much extra protein we have that we'll usually express in capsids per mil equivalent, or you could get that in a milligram per mil as well. Full capsid titers in uh, viral genomes per mil, and then the same thing for DNA as well. And then from there, uh, the math is pretty easy to look at what's the percent full of our capsids or empty flow ratio if you prefer that. Okay, Stunner's performance for genome titer stacks up really, really well against other analytical techniques. So here we have an example of uh, some method qualification against the DDPCR for both single-stranded AAV as well as self-complementary AAV. Uh, on the left, this uh, method was undergoing optimization where the customer was looking at running a lot of different parameters. So across 28 runs, they were evaluating three different workflows, two primer targets, and uh, looking at operator-operator variability to try to figure out what's the, the target genome titer that they'd expect. That's why you got that large variability from that large design space that they were exploring for DDPCR. Meanwhile, Stunner uh, has a very, very precise answer on genome titer that hits within the expected value based on PCR. Uh, this customer then took the optimized process for their DDPCR and across 33 rounds and four operators uh, ran it on a self-complementary AAV particle. And again, we see that Stunner's read on full capsid titer matches up very, very nicely and within the error of DDPCR uh, for that sample. If we look at capsid titer instead of genome titer, uh, for this we want to compare against uh, an ELISA technique. So in this case we're looking at an AAV9 uh, that we're evaluating against an ELISA, a typical plate-based commercially available ELISA plate. So in this case we're seeing for full AAV9 and empty AAV9, we have slopes very, very close to one, which is what you want to see. R squared values at 0.99 or higher, so that everything is very nice and linear. And then we can also see the dynamic range here uh, for Stunner, which goes down to about one E12 capsids per mil, and then there's not really an upper limit. But more importantly, uh, when you compare Stunner versus an ELISA, on Stunner, we're getting all of the data points that you're seeing on this graph, which is 64 measurements in less than an hour on Stunner, because each sample read takes about 45 seconds. Now, if we were to compare that to an ELISA, we're going to be doing a lot of pipetting and a lot of uh, handling of that sample and processing over the course of a couple hours. So not only is the answer faster on Stunner, uh, but it's also done more in a hands-free manner, and it's done completely without any kind of standards to calibrate an ELISA result against. Okay, so next I want to pivot to look at what kind of work is being done with Stunner uh, on AAV and what's being published out there. So I'll look at these uh, papers published in these four journals. So first, we'll talk about uh, a, a look at using Stunner as a rapid QC tool 
for downstream purification and manufacturing uh, that was published in Gen Biotechnology. So here, first, the, the paper begins with an overview of evaluating uh, the basic uh, outputs of Stunner and how they're using it uh, in their, their workflow. And like I mentioned already, you're using UV-Vis to understand total amounts of DNA and protein, using DLS to understand size and size distribution and avoid any kind of aggregation, and then looking at both capsid titer uh, for uh, full capsids, empty capsids, total capsids, uh, all together. Okay, so the first very uh, interesting and helpful result was when this customer began to look at the UV-Vis and compare that to their established uh, pedestal-based UV-Vis system where if you're running just pure UV vis, then you often have an A260, an A280 ratio, those individual values on their own. And from that point on, you're, you're sort of on your own. So if there's a contaminant present in your sample, it's hard to see, uh, you can only rely on your ratios. And this customer found that by UV vis, you can get an expectation of what the concentration should be for your protein, but can't go much further. Uh, but then if you run the same sample on Stunner, what you'll see is that Stunner can deconvolute your sample with unmix and understand how much total DNA and protein is present, but in this case, also understand the iodixinol that's present in your sample. So here on this one read, we're getting a total amount of protein expressed in viral genomes per mil, or sorry, DNA expressed in viral genomes per mil, protein in capsids per mil, and iodixinol as a volume percentage. By, uh, if we look at capsid titer, we can see that the full capsid titer and total capsid titer in green and blue respectively are again, both uh, linear and precise. So we're seeing R squared values above 0.99 and error bars are usually not even visible on these plots. When we start, this, this publication starts to benchmark against uh, other techniques like qPCR and ELISA, what we're seeing is pretty good agreement between the stunner results and the uh, qPCR and ELISA results, which is great because they're actually uh, complementary to each other. So in the case of qPCR, we have a sequence specific technique to detect how many of my gene of interests are present. But when we're looking at uh, Stunner full capsid titer, that's actually an assessment of the total amount of DNA that's present. So where we see those two you know, green uh, genome titers agree, we can be assured that the total amount of DNA that they have and the sequence-specific DNA that I, we have is a really good match for each other. Where we see kind of a mismatch, there might be an area that we want to investigate further and confirm uh, if this is potentially a problem uh, where the, the primer that we're looking for, the complementary uh, sequence that we're looking for, uh, may not be present for some portion of those molecules. Likewise for ELISA, ELISA is going to be specific to capsids, um, but how that handles aggregates, uh, that'll be handled differently between the ELISA and the Stunner total capsid titer. So when we see really good agreement between the techniques, and then we know that that sample's a really nice sample that doesn't suffer from aggregation. Okay. Uh, in the next paper, this is actually an interesting look at transfection methods and trying to optimize transfection reagent for uh, uh, AAB production. So we're traveling a little bit further upstream uh, in the overall AAB process and trying to understand what transfection reagent helps to optimize AAB production. So in this case, the role that Stunner's playing uh, was one of tiebreaker. So if this customer originally relied on uh, BCA and ELISA to uh, use, you know, to determine a capsid titer and to determine percent full uh, versus a qPCR method, then what they saw was BCA and ELISA had, first of all, higher variability, but in some cases started to show some disagreement here with the, uh, the HSV uh, AAB production system. So in this case, Stunner was used to understand the percent full for their capsids and sort of break the tie of how, many, uh, how full each of these capsids uh, production processes were. So in this case, it agreed uh, with higher percent full capsids produced by AAV versus other transfection reagents being used. And again, in this uh, molecular therapy methods paper, they also compared Stunner to a, a qPCR method and saw good agreement across uh, nine different uh, production batches. Okay, and then the last two papers I'll kind of cover uh, quite quickly. So the, these are sort of a pivot to industry. The first one, uh, where Spark uh, mentions that we're, they're using Stunner for empty full determination. 
um, in this paper. Now, this paper focuses mostly on the immun immunology and immunogenicity of AAV in human blood, uh, but it's nice to see that stun is being used as their method out there in SPARC. And then in human gene therapy, this is a, a paper focused on qualifying size exclusion chromatography uh, in an analytical development program. And this is a nice one because it does compare SAC MALS versus DDPCR ELISA and STUNNER on the same samples. And if we look at kind of the main results, then we can evaluate that first. Well, STUNNER has a precision that it compares uh, equally or more favorably uh, to SAC MALS. So we're seeing percent CVs for SAC MALS and for STUNNER uh, in the low single digits for almost all samples which is great because Stunner is going to give you an answer on a lower volume and a faster time than SecMol as well. So again, Stunner is about 45 seconds, and this SecMol's run will be anytime, anywhere between 30 minutes and an hour. Uh, DDP Sarah and Eliza, of course, because you're combining two techniques, you're going to see a much less precise answer. Uh, Stunner's genome titer was also on point with these other methods. So if you take these data points and plot them, uh, for each of these six samples, then you can see really, really nice agreement across all of these uh, methods so that you understand that uh, in this case, you have both the total amount of DNA detected by Stunner and the sequence specific amount of DNA detected by DDPCR is all agreeing across your three techniques. And lastly, empty full ratio, when this was evaluated, they saw really good correlation across all of their samples uh, and really good agreement with uh, a, a SVAUC as well. Okay, so that's the kind of data that Stunner can help produce. So this is where Stunner fits into your workflow, uh, especially because Stunner is, you know, perfect for very nice, clean samples. It can help answer titers on or answer questions on genome and capsid titer as early as, you know, ultrafiltration or uh, affinity chromatography and start to give you really good answers on how well your purification setup is eliminating your empty capsids and preserving your integrity of your capsid so you don't see aggregation. And all of that information on Stunner is available from only microliter of sample, and that'll get you empty flow ratio, aggregation, and capsid titer uh, in a very fast, easy, and flexible platform assay. That's why we like to say that Stunner is a label-free, standard-free, hassle-free titer machine. And if I can pivot back to lunch uh, one more time, so just like the first step to speedy takeout is, you know, uncovering what's going inside, going on inside of each package, uh, Stunner can help you get the rapid in-process data, in data that you need so you're never surprised about what's inside your sample when you go take a look. And with that, I think we can open it up to any questions and uh, welcome back, Myrtle. Thank you so much, Kevin, for introducing us to Stunner and how it's being used currently for capsid titer characterization, fast to low volume, empty full ratio, and as a key part of at-line analytics during downstream purification. We have some great questions that came in while you were discussing um, that presentation. Um, and just to let our attendees know, you still have time to put a question in, um, in the Q&A um, button, either at the top or at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Um, so I'll go through some of the questions um, that have already come in, uh, Kevin, and let's see if more come in while we're talking. Um, so first, um, one of our attendees is asking, uh, can the stunner be used in GMP spaces? Yes, so Stunner has a lot of tools that make it great for GMP spaces. Uh, it has 21 CFR Part 11 uh, tools that you can add on. It also has a lot of uh, UBViz standards and DLS standards that you know are either available through us uh, or, or third parties to validate its performance as well. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, let's see. Um, Obviously, you spent part of the talk talking about um, uh, comparing Stunner to ELISA, which needs standards in that assay. Does the Stunner need standards? So no, the Stunner doesn't need standards because everything is calculated from first principles. So there is only need for a monthly calibration of the light scattering intensity. It's just a simple standard that we supply. Uh, and after that, everything else is done kind of from the physics. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so let's see, other questions here. Um, 
how is it being used alongside other analytical techniques like AUC, for example? I, we saw you comparing it, but um, how is that used side by side? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a, a very interesting question. So when you're talking about something like AUC or DDPCR or cryo EM, um, a lot of those techniques are more sample intensive or slower and kind of uh, costly assays, whether that's from time or sample volume or what have you. So anytime you're running a costly assay, you got to think about, okay, what is my number of samples I want to run? Or maybe what's my failure rate? So when Stunner can help ensure that your samples will be successful or can reduce the number of samples that you actually want to take to run AUC or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, that's when it's really nicely positioned alongside those other intense, uh, those other intense assays. Um, Stunner is also a way where you can bring, you know, answers like empty full ratio or caps of tighter to every step in your process. So if you want to think about, you know, empty full ratio at affinity chromatography and anion exchange chromatography and sterofiltration, mm -hmm. that's a lot of sample. That's a lot of cost. And then Stunner can help you get those answers at a much faster, more cost-effective and uh, easy way. Yeah, that's really interesting. You brought up um, ion exchange chromatography. It actually goes right into a question somebody else asked. Um, and you already said that it is sample intensive in what it consumes. But um, what about the data, like comparing the empty full ratio um, data that comes out of ion exchange chromatography? Uh, so what we'll typically see people use uh, Stunner for in ion exchange chromatography is when they're optimizing their elution profiles. So, you know, if it's stepwise or gradient or, or, or if they're experimenting with different pHs, then they'll typically take fractions off of it and compare it to Stunner. Um, since a lot of the analytical techniques that I've seen on anion exchange chromatography are usually going to be UV biz based, they're not going to be um, as robust when they're looking at tighter as something like Stunner that's going to rely on the light scattering method, uh, which is a, a really fabulous way to get caps of tighter off of it. So, Essentially, what most customers use is fractions, go to Stunner. Stunner helps you understand caps of tighter and empty flow ratio uh, so that you can better get a balance between purity and yield as you optimize that method. Okay, great. So again, um, another um, uh, orthogonal technique that is used side by side. Yeah. Um, so another question kind of related to this again is, um, do you expect the instrument to be used in parallel or be qualified by traditional ELISA PCR methods? Um, this particular person is um, expressing concern on the non-specificity of the method. Um, it seems like it would be used as an initial screen and then reanalyzed later by something more specific. Ah, so there is value to having both a specific method and a non-specific method. So let's say, for example, you have a qPCR or DDPCR method, uh, and its primer is complementary to, uh, you know, multiple points in your sequence. Um, it's been well published that depending on your primer sequence, you can have up to five-fold variability in your titer. So confirming that your sequence is there is excellent and very helpful. But at the same time, you want a non-specific method so that you're not susceptible to those kinds of issues where your primer kind of has a, you know, so your primer maybe determines your titer, your primer has such an, primer has such an influence on your titer. Having a non-specific method where that's not a factor really helps you understand um, are these uh, samples perhaps really at different concentrations or is this just a primer effect that we're seeing across different titers? So there's a, there's a lot of value. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of value there in confirming um, that you have the right answer. Um, okay, so we have some other questions here. Um, can Stunner measure self-complementary A of these genome titer? If so, how? Yeah, so the way that Stunner sees a self-complementary genome is just like um, any other piece of DNA, except with the self-complementary genome, you'd expect more double-stranded um, character to occur. So this is something that there are, you know, levers that you can change inside of Stunner to uh, adjust the uh, adjust the analysis uh, based on if you expect your genome to be single stranded only or self complementary only or somewhere in between. You can adjust the amount of double stranded uh, DNA that Stunner expects to see in its analysis. 
-hmm. Okay. Um, there is a one other attendee asking again, if you could give just a, a fast explanation again for empty full. Ah, okay. I was getting to empty full. So for empty full only, uh, it's a method that's pretty close to the 2001 summer paper, uh, which essentially analyzes from UVVis the total amount of protein and the total amount of DNA. Now, the main difference is that Stunner is going to do that calculation uh, off of an intact AAV sample. That's just, you pipette it into the Stunner plate and it's ready to go. Uh, so there's no denaturation, no standards to compare against. Uh, and even determining extinction coefficients is just done from the sequence of DNA and amino acids that you're using for your viral proteins in your genome. Uh, so we've taken that method where it's just a UVVis balance of protein and DNA and made all of the math uh, just easy. So that's the method. It's purely driven from UVVis. So you want to operate off of a very nicely cleaned up sample. Um, but there's also some ways that the SLS and UVVis talk to each other so you can understand uh, results, um, even if there's a lot of contaminants present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Uh, Stunner is really cool that it can do that. Um, okay, some more, a little bit general question, but what is the sizing range of the DLS detector and Stunner? So the sizing range is the same as every, you know, I would say world-class DLS system that's out there. So it goes between, you know, 0.3 nanometers to 1,000 nanometers, which is pretty typical for a, a DLS system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and can you analyze any other viral vectors? Yes, absolutely. So AAV is the application that uh, we were talking about today, but we can also look at adenovirus. Uh, we can look at uh, other larger viruses like lentivirus, HSV. Now the answers you'll get on those other larger viruses like adenovirus or HSV, um, uh, bacular virus. Uh, it was even looking at phage yesterday. They'll be a little bit different because AAV is smaller and you know exactly what AAV is going to be made of. Uh, it's a little bit simpler than those viruses, um, but you could definitely get really good results on uh, DLS, size, size distribution, and concentration on Stunner. And then you can also run this on LNPs as well. So I was about to say that, but not forget LNPs. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely get size, size distribution and a total total nucleic acid payload off of uh, LNP samples too. Yeah, Stunner is a really useful instrument. Let's see. Um, last question that just came in is, is Stunner suitable for crude AAV samples? Yeah, so you can absolutely run an AAV sample that's crude on Stunner. What you'll get from the result, uh, will you'll get size and size distribution. So typically what you'll see is there's a lot of proteins and extra um, uh, extra signal in there, a lot of aggregates going up. Uh, on the UVVis side of things, that's where you're going to get you know, value from it because as you harvest your sample, there's going to be an amount of protein and amount of DNA that you'd expect, and that's what Stunner will deliver. So in that case, it's a low volume quantification of total protein and total DNA that you could use as a CQA uh, in your early stages of the process to understand how well your harvest went. So it's not going to be able to fully analyze tighter yet because that sample is too, too dirty with other aggregates and cellular proteins, but it will give you an understanding of total nucleic acid and protein. Okay, great. Okay, that is the end of our questions. So thank you so much for answering all those questions. Um, and I also want to thank all of you who joined us live today. If you would like to have a deeper conversation with our team, please do get in touch with us at info at unchainlabs.com or learn more at our website at www.unchainedlabs.com. We would love to connect with you. Thank you again for attending our virtual seminar, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you much.